Hi, my name is Miss Emmelyn, and I am a teaching artist in the Pace Arts program, where we integrate the arts with classroom curriculum. We are coming to you today thanks to the Acadiana Center for the Arts and the Lafayette Parish School System in Lafayette, Louisiana. All you will need for today's lesson is a comfy chair, a white piece of paper that you can draw on, and a pencil. You can also bring with you a pen if you want to add that to your drawing and any colors you might want to bring. We're going to be using black, brown, green, and you could also use some blue if you would like. We're going to be studying um, a border collie because I happen to own one here on the farm and we noticed that the border collie has a happy relationship with the other farm animals because border collies like to protect and herd. Herd means lead other animals to safety or for instance lead the sheep to the barn or um, bring them through a gate. Border Collie puppies actually get trained how to do this and they're really, really smart. I have some videos I'm going to show you and I have a book I'm going to read to you. So sit back, relax, gather your art supplies, and we will begin. So these are Border Collies. Basically what they do <laughs> right now is they chase Frisbees, but their job is to tell a sheep what to do. We don't have quite enough work for a Border Collie. So, we're working on circus dogs. Why not? Get it, Leaf. Get it. Now, these are the fields that our border collie gets to run in when he helps us with the sheep. We move the sheep from field to field so that the grass can stay green and keep growing. So you'll notice that the sheep aren't here right now, but it gives you an idea of where they will run. And it's such a beautiful evening, I thought I would read you this book outside. Morag and the Lamb, Joan Lingard and Patricia Casey. That's a really great illustration right there. The lamb taking shelter under its mama. And there's the sheepdog. In this story, the sheepdog is white and brown, but you notice our sheepdog is white and black. Morag the Lamb, written by Joan Lingard, illustrated by Patricia Casey. So all of these pictures are drawn by somebody, and we're talking about the activity of the sheepdog, or in our case, the border collie, and how much they love to move. And we're going to find a picture in this book that shows how to draw movement. And we are learning creative movement at a about how to move our bodies, but also in visual art. How can we draw something that looks like it's moving across the page? Let's discover. Now be good, both of you, said Mother. She drove off leaving Russell and Morag to stay with Grandma and Grandpa. Why does everyone tell us to be good, asked Russell. We are good, Morag barked to show that she agreed. Grandma said, it's lambing time. Grandpa said, Russell, you must see that Morig doesn't worry the sheep. Russell said, Morig, you mustn't worry the sheep. See how these sheep are playing? 
So he's telling his puppy, don't worry the sheep. And worry means make them afraid and make them run for no reason. Big yellow tractor. The farmer came along the road in her canary yellow tractor. I'm going to feed the sheep, she said. Would you like to come along, Russell? Oh, yes, please, said Russell. Morag wagged her tail. So wagged is a word that means swishing back and forth and back and forth. And you'll notice that her tail is up and her mouth is open and her ears are up. That means she's listening and she's responding to this person talking by wagging her tail. She's wagging her tail. We better not take more eggs, said the farmer, just in case she tries to worry the sheep. Russell was puzzled. Why would she worry sheep? It's a serious matter when dogs worry sheep, said the farmer. If they do, they often have to be put away. Put away, Russell turned pale. So did Morag under her fur. Russell said, Morag, you really must not worry the sheep. Her ears are up and she looks like she's listening to Russell, doesn't she? Sitting nicely. Grandpa lifted Russell up. Hold tight now, said Grandma. Morg was left behind. So sheep um, listen also when a dog is around, and they aren't talking, but they're communicating through action. And we learn to communicate through action as well. These dogs can help the sheep go in different directions. So um, it's a happy relationship between the sheep and the dog, but they don't know yet if Morg knows how to communicate with sheep. She went slowly down the garden, keeping close to the dry stone wall. She pricked up her ears. What was that? Look, her ears go up, just like our puppy. Bah, bah. What do you think makes that noise? What animal makes that noise? Bah. Morag's looking. She jumped over the wall and into the next field. Then she saw the lamb. The lamb is in a big pricker patch. Twisted vines all around that little lamb. The lamb was all tangled up in a brumble bush. Do you think Mora could help? There she is looking at the lamby. Morag pushed her head into the jaggy bush until their noses were almost touching. The lamb smelt strange. She wriggled closer and their noses went bup, <laughs> cried the lamb. It looked very worried. Morag's running. See the action? In the drawing, we're going to work on action in our drawing. Movement. But Morag hadn't worried it, had she? What would happen if the farmer thought she had? Would she be put away? She leapt over a stream and galloped up the field. The wind rushed in her ears. She saw Russell. So we have two action words. We have leapt and galloped. We usually see the word gallop with a horse, but in this case, Morg is galloping. It means running fast. And I guess you can gallop if you have four legs, which Morg has four legs. There they are working to feed the sheep. She barked loudly once, ruff, twice, ruff, three times, ruff, telling him to come and follow her. See the movement in this picture? down all the way down we can make that movement with our bodies I am sure oh Morig said Russell Morig looked up at him with anxious eyes 
Had she worried the lamb? We must get help, said Russell. Bah, cried the lamb. Stuck back there. Come quickly, Russell yelled. The farmer began to run down the field towards them. There's some action right there. Running. And there's the farmer helping the little lamb out. And Morg's looking. Goodness me, said the farmer. You are in a tangle. She eased aside the branches of the bramble, bramble bush and set the lamb free. Very helpful. The lamb goes back to its mama. Good boy, Russell, said the farmer. It was Morag who found the lamb, said Russell. Very good girl, Morag, said the farmer. Morag didn't worry the lamb, did she? asked Russell. Of course not, said the farmer. To worry sheep means to chase and try to hurt them. Morag would never, ever do that, said Russell, and Morag barked. Once, twice, three times. To show that she agreed. Look at that happy face. And here's the fleece, which means it has not been sheared. And here's the little lamby back in its safe spot underneath its mama. And there's Morag. So we're going to look for um, ways that the border collie moves in this story. And we're going to draw a picture of that movement. So get your white piece of paper, your pencil or pen, and you can do colors with the pencil, meaning a gray color, or you can get a brown color or a black color. Remember in this case, the puppy is brown and white, but in the videos I've showed you, our puppy is black and white, so it is up to you. All right, so we've been talking about movement, how um, we see movement through a puppy dog today. And some of the videos that I've showed you not only show some of that movement, but also um, how dogs like to protect sheep. Border Collies have an instinct about sheep and animals. They like other animals and they have been helping sheep for years and years and years. So we read the book, and I want to flip through and just look for some pictures that show movement. Sitting still with the mama. Expression. They're looking at each other. Here's one. This is somebody waving. But we want to look for movement from Morg the puppy dog. So we talked a little bit about how we, we would see the movement happening with the wagging of the tail. Sitting and listening, sitting and listening. Ooh, here's a nice one. What are they doing here? What is he? I mean, sorry, it's a girl. What is she doing here? Yes walking. What is she doing here? Well, she jumped over the wall. That's a movement word. There's the lamb looking at each other. The lambs say bah, or sometimes meh if their feet are, if their mouth is closed when they say it. Aha, here's a nice one. Jumping up, crouching down, and even lowering farther down. So we're going to look at these three pictures, and we're going to draw today all three. If you want to think of your own, what are some other words that you can think of for how the Border Collie moves? Running, jumping, Sitting, wagging its tail, crouching means going way down to the floor. So we're going to pick three and you can pick your own three. And we're going to draw what we call in visual arts a series, meaning we draw more than one of the dog. 
So if we work real hard and we get through one, we might say, that's it, I am an expert. But guess what? When we choose a new movement, that dog has to be shaped differently. So we have to look at all the lines and all of the ways that the dog moves to see a new shape and a new movement. So we're gonna create three different pictures and three movements. Now, using this picture as a guide, we're going to draw on our paper three boxes and that'll help us kind of keep, it'll help us keep the puppy dog the same shape and it'll help us with comparing and looking at more than one picture at a time. So you can draw these boxes just by putting a ruler down or you can draw them by drawing three squares and we're going to put them inside the three squares. So I'm going to use this line but just like you can I'm going to draw three squares and I'm not going to worry too much about the straight lines but I am going to think to myself that I want these boxes to be the same size. Okay? Now, already we can count. One, two, three. Already we can see that they're going to change. The image will change, change, change. But one of the reasons why this illustrator drew three pictures is to show three ways that the dog can move. Now we know that puppy dog isn't all of a sudden three puppy dogs. What this picture is making us think is that the puppy is moving from one spot to the other to the other and trying to create a noise for Russell to come running. Okay? Now when we see pictures like this in a box you might think of a cartoon and it's a great way to show how one picture can change slightly become something else and become something else and it'll show movement across the page okay just working with these three boxes today there are, there are a lot of ways of showing movement now we notice that in this case um, the puppy Morag is on two feet so let's look at the feet what do you see what kind of feet do puppies have they have paws p-a-w-s meaning there are way, it's a way for them to hold the ground, push off the ground, and it curves around. So we want to notice first the curvy shapes. Okay? Funny face, ears flopping, face coming down in the front, a curve of the tail, like a U shape going all the way up and then its legs coming down in a very simple green to show that Morag is standing on the ground. Okay, let's practice that. So I'm gonna lean farther down to the picture and I'm gonna look at the paper and I want you to draw inside your box if your boxes are smaller than mine, that is okay because if they are the same size, then your puppy will be the same size as the boxes. Okay, let's just give it a shot. One, two, and three, just like she barked loudly. Once, twice, and three times. 
So if we know, we have to put it in the, in the, so we've got a paw here, and we've got a tail here. See how I'm reaching all of the edges? And we have head here with ears. There are lots of ways of doing this. Then it's back leg. So let's try one more time. One paw up higher, one paw down lower, and let's start with the face. And if the face is all you do, that is just fine with me. Nice little um, whiskery face because the uh, border collie definitely has a whiskery face. Okay, now I'm drawing the color, which I think I'm going to do black because our border collie leaf is black and white. Now this is the fun part of the mouth. It does curve around like this and his tongue is coming straight out of his mouth. When their tongues come out it usually means they are breathing a lot, they um, get oxygen through their tongue and their breath and they, um, if they're too hot, they pant to get the heat out of their body. But look how he He's already kind of looking at you. How is yours going? Now I'm going to focus on this part. This is kind of a rough sketch, but it still indicates, see now my paw is too high, but it's okay. Still indicates the shape of his body. Small little movements can create an idea of the shape without doing all of the shape. There, I think we did better this time. Another little paw. Now our Border Collie Leaf, he loves to ride in the car. Do you have a dog at home? Does he like to ride in the car? Now he also loves to play frisbee. So here we have four paws, a nice little elbow. They do have a bending spot in their legs. Now he's swooping down like the U, so we're going to go ahead and go with it even if he's a little bit shorter than what we see. And you know what? I'm going to break all my rules. I hope that you can do this too. I need this box to be a little bit bigger. How is yours coming along? Back of the leg. So pictures and the real live thing helps us learn to draw. And we come around the paw again. One, two, three. And this, of course, is not absolutely perfect, but guess what? We have a lot more because we're doing a series, right? With his belly and we're missing the last part of his leg. It's about halfway down his belly. So we try to draw what we see as opposed to what we just imagine we see because we're not doing an animation in this sense. We're trying to draw what we see. So watching your dog or in this case 
the Border Collie really helps draw a realistic animal. So maybe if you have a dog at home or even a cat, you can practice on your own animal by taking pictures. How did you do? All right, moving on to the second movement. Second picture. He is he is a uh, bowing down in this one. Okay? Two paws on the ground, lowering down. So we've got them lower just to illustrate him lower down. His tongue's out, his ears are up, just like Leaf likes to do. One, two on a diagonal line. Draw a very light diagonal. These are also diagonal lines. Small diagonal. Head will be here, tail like a backwards C, and a straight line. See how we did that? It's kind of like turning in movement to straight line shape. So let's give this a go. And you can make any kind of puppy shape. It doesn't have to be exactly like this. And I know some of you are really, really talented, so I just want to see what you can come up with. And if you like this and you keep practicing, then you could come up with your own puppy cartoon and you could tell a story based on all of your series of movements with this puppy and your story could be about the sheep or something entirely different whatever you want to create, okay? Let's put his belly in there. Basically, we just want to demonstrate the movement of him crouching down, okay? And you can try, try again and again in order to get a shape that you would be happy with. Here's the fur right here and the swoosh of his back and then the tail, backwards C. And all of his fur is going like this. Now I'm drawing it a little bit fast so if you would like to, please stop the video and try and take your own time Take as much time as you need. Now we notice that his tongue is right about here because his head's down low. So let's put the fur, do the ear. He likes to lift his ears up. The nice wide whiskers and the cheek. Good, and curve. Curve his mouth, nose, and tongue. Two little eyes, he's looking at you. Ear, little fur, -y, fur on top. And a couple more whiskers. Now let's finish this part right here. Okay. Is there anything else I'm missing? Is your puppy looking like he's leaning down? Good. Okay, number three. This time he has his legs out to the side. He is happy to see you. He is wagging his tail. He is smiling. And you know what? I keep saying he because our border collie is a he, but in this story it's a she. So, all right, third one. Please stop the video anytime you want, or if you just enjoy watching the drawing 
and then going back later, you can do that too. Okay, what kind of shapes do we see in this movement? His feet are spread apart, planted on the ground, and this looks like a triangle to me. Look at that. So, if we go to the page and we draw a little triangle, that's where he's going to put his two paws. And then his face is going to be right here in the middle, and it's almost like an upside down triangle the other way. And then we have a curved shape, paws, curved shape on that side too, a little bit higher. Then we have the wonderful tail, it's coming up a little bit high. So I'm going to erase this top of the box just so we can keep drawing so his tail can swoop like a backwards C and then away we go. Good, starting there. Okay, I'm going to start with the paws. One, two, three, one, two, three. We've got a couple more toes, but for this, we're just showing three. Make it curve in, skinny, and then it gets a little bit wider with some fur on both sides. Curves back this way. He's got a nice furry body. Come down like that and around. One, two, and three. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Because sometimes fewer pictures actually, I mean, fewer lines can tell a better story than a lot of lines. It's got a little belly right there and his hind paw. Good, and then reaching up to the tail. Nice big tail, because it's so animated. He's showing us so much by wagging his tail. Curving back around. Okay, now what do we need to do? Maybe, hmm, maybe erase that line. Let's put his face right in there top of the ear this one's coming out to the side remember it doesn't have to be perfect we're just trying to draw what we see and in this case his coloring comes around his eyes showing the side of his face Oh, he kind of looks like a raccoon, but let's see if we can make a doggy face by his nice big smile. Aha, he looks more like a doggy now. All right, now this guy looks related. This guy looks like a whole different dog, but that's okay because his face is shaped a little different. And then he, I could work on his belly and I could work on his front legs and his back. We could add some of his coloring to the back. But basically, I'm happy enough with it for now. So if you want to get your pen and add some coloring to your puppy, Border Collies are usually more than one color. So you've got black and white. You've got black and brown sometimes. White and brown. And I bet there would be some brown, black, and white. I bet. So you can add your color in just like you drew it. Okay? And... I would go all the way down that row with my color and I would probably take a good amount of time to do this because I'm feeling pretty proud about what I drew so instead of just doing the ink really fast I would want to slow down take my time see how the shadows are but one of the quickest ways to make a picture look like he's standing on the ground is to add some green under the paws. Oop, it broke on me. Uh, 
Okay, add your green. Maybe come up with a name for your puppy. Oop, just the ground part. And I can't wait to see what kind of movement you have created in your drawing this week. Let's sign our work. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson in drawing a series and also trying to draw movement. And our inspiration for the lesson was the dear, sweet puppy named Leaf, the black and white border collie, and also the brown and white border collie in the book, uh, Sweet Morag. So, um, we will be posting a new lesson every day at 10 a.m. on the Acadiana Center for the Arts YouTube channel for kindergarten, first, and second grade. In addition, you can also get these lessons on AOC as a part of Learn the Learn United program. Accessible on AOC on Cox Channel 16 or LUS Channel 14. Kindergarten lessons air at 8 and first and second grades at 9 a.m. Some lessons will be in visual arts and some in creative movement. So be sure to come back and make art with us tomorrow. If you're interested in supporting programs like this, visit AcadianaCenterForTheArts.org, the nonprofit who manages the PACE program, and please spread the word, help us share our videos, and keep making art.